In this video, we are going to look at both of the suspension systems and find out why one is better than the other. Let's start with the twin shock setup. Despite having two shock absorbers, it is the simplest form of suspension system here. In this system, the shock absorbers are directly mounted to the bike's frame without any linkages. This one has much better load bearing capacity than the mono shock system, simply because of the two shock absorbers and the higher travel that it offers. For that reason, this type of suspension system were widely used in off-road motorcycles about 30 years ago. But the twin shock system has a serious disadvantage. In a twin shock system, the suspension units are typically attached very close to the rear axle in the swing arm. This means that the suspension movement is nearly identical to the full deflection of the swing arm, which result in the same stroke length of the shock absorber piston. Suppose you are going over a large bump and it gives the rear axle an upward movement of 100mm. It will result in the same 100mm stroke in the shocks. This will interrupt the entire balance of the bike. Also, frequent movement causes the suspension oil to heat up and foam or forth. Hence, the shock absorber piston begins to behave like a plunger, thus losing its ability to perform as it should. This is known as shock absorber fading. Monoshock system eliminates most of these problems by simply changing the position of the suspension unit. In this system, the suspension unit is placed far ahead of the rear axle and almost in the center of the bike. In the early days of monoshock system, the suspension unit was directly connected to the swing arm, but now the suspension unit is connected to the swing arm via linkages. This allows for the use of a smaller shock absorber with less travel. But still, bikes like Ninja 650, ER6N still uses the direct link monoshock suspension. Since the movement of the swing arm is not entirely transmitted to the suspension unit, the bike will have much better stability even if you hit a really big bump. These movements can be further reduced in a monoshock system with complex linkages. This means that a single shock absorber unit can respond better to the change in road surfaces soaking up smaller bumps and shocks with ace and comfort without sacrificing the ability to cornering. The shock absorber fading problem is much less likely to happen in a monoshock setup. The lesser deflection in the suspension system means lesser opportunity for the damper oil to forth, hence reducing the heating up of suspension oil. Now you might be wondering that why some modern day cruisers still have the same old twin shock setup. Well. The cruisers are more about looks and comfort and generally they are much heavier compared to the sports bikes. The outright performance always has a backseat in the cruisers. With the amount of space available, it will be a hideous task to install a multi-link monoshock suspension system at the rear. That's why they have a tin shock suspension setup. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and if you have any extra points that I just missed, please feel free to leave them down below. And hey, don't forget to subscribe. See you guys next time. Bye.